Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 2 of Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. And today we'll be doing Colossus, the first level we can 100% complete. Also, every level in this game has an intro cutscene and an outro cutscene, which is super cool because I believe the game also takes less time to load. Looks like that Yeti ate that dude. Also, fun fact, Yetis actually aren't bad in the Spyro universe, except in this game. So I will always talk to the first guy to get a little bit of information about the world. A Yeti has been rampaging around our home, but we've managed to trap him by shutting all the doors. If you talk to the other brothers, they will open the gates and guide you to him. Wait, doors or gates? Which one are they? But anyways, 400 gems, like I said before, one talisman, and three orbs here, and we have to get, um, perfect in hockey. Idle Springs is technically the next level in order, but you can't complete it, so I always come to this one. If you want the achievement here, that's how you get it. You just headbutt a goat. Darn mountain goats. Uh, yeah, so the doors will be locked around here, and what you have to do, also little, um... I forget what type of penguins those are. They made them cute, though. But yeah, you just talk to these guys, and then they'll do stuff. Uh, my biggest issue with this game, and it's not even really, like, an actual gameplay factor, but these guys go used to go wai yai yai yao and now they just go whoa, 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 whoa. It just doesn't sound as cool. Also, these yaks, while super cute, right? Before they roll, their eyes turn bright red. It's like the freakiest thing ever from such a cute enemy. I just think that's ridiculous, you know? Like, it just looks crazy. The rage from these guys is nutty. Also, keep an eye out for those statues. They will play an important role throughout this level. Oh, looks like we gotta talk to Who Brother Clive. Who needs a key when you can do this? I can't tell if he lowered the ground or raised this up. Kinda look like both. Enemies like those yaks are Oh yeah, too big, we know that. Once again, you always give me the advice way too late, where I um, would have already defeated a couple of them, which is something that Spyro games are honestly really bad for, is giving you the advice on how to defeat a certain enemy well after you've already dealt with that enemy. Because you're probably going to try out some way to defeat Each it. Each time you defeat an enemy, it will release a spirit particle. The spirit particles will activate the power-up in that world. If a power-up is inactive, you need to defeat more enemies. Okay, so I left that little tidbit in because that is new info. Like, that's not something in any other Spyro game. Because Spyro 3 goes back to having the thing where enemies drop gems instead of spirit particles. Which makes me really question if the enemies in the next game were created like Nasty Norks minions were, or what. Also, these are like little references to like different levels and stuff. Um can't tell which one that is. It's one of the volcano ones. The pictures aren't super clear. Like, that looks like it'd be Idle Springs and stuff like that. And that's, um, Autumn Plains, the second home world, and stuff like that. Hey. Thanks, Curtis. Oh. Also, this elevator just does not look as good as it used to. It had a lot more detailing in Spiral 1, which is really funny, considering, like, look how much more detailing everything else has. Like, torches and everything. And she'll be like, remember Hunter's advice, Spyro. Remember Hunter's advice. Yeah, it's funny because that's only if you miss that one jump. It's technically not even like the, the orb challenge that he had for you. Also, speaking of orbs, really funny, eh, how we haven't found a single orb yet? 
Now we need 11. Funny thing is, there's not 11 enemies out here. One thing I didn't know as a kid until like my second or third playthrough of the game was that the Yeti at the end of the level here actually counts as an enemy. I thought the Yeti was tougher than that. I guess he was all bark. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> anyway, I was just guarding our sacred talisman to make sure the Yeti didn't eat it. Why would he eat the talisman? Anyways, it's just one of these little guys. And there we go. Technically, that's all you need to do for the level, because we already have enough gems and everything. But, with that out of the way, we now have the ability to use the... It used to be a spring in the original. It's essentially just the super jump. Where you now have the ability to travel higher up, I guess. It's kind of a weird one. It doesn't really ever come back in any Spyro game, actually. Which I always found kind of weird that they introduced a gimmick like that, but then never built upon it, you know? Also, some challenges like this actually have two of the world's orb collection, which is kind of insane. There's also ice physics in this game, unlike Spyro 1 where the ground actually is slippery, and you cannot jump or charge. You can only skate around. You can flame, but that's all you can do. There's nothing else you can honestly do, and it's it's just that. We've only been here six minutes, and we're almost done this world. Really? Oh. Okay, we might actually be able to do Idle Springs in this episode, too. And then episode three, we'll probably explore the world, like the home world, uh, get most of it done once again, it's another level that you can't actually 100%, which is a bummer. So we also do this orb challenge next. Thank goodness you scared that evil spirit away, but now it will hide in the statues. If All right, so flame all statues. It's a green. It's a three-star challenge, which is kind of weird. Also, the hitbox on him is kind of odd. It's really weird. Also, rockets, like I said, unlike the first game, they get big and stay big in the rest of the Sparrow series. Anyways, let's go over here and grab these gems. I think, unlike the original, none of the gems fall down, which is kind of interesting. Now, we should be able to get every single gem in this level just over here, I think. Where am I missing gems? Oh, well. Uh, we can go down here, though, and collect... Hello? We can go and just... Or collect. Well, I don't know why I said collect. Go and claim these, uh, statues. Um, excuse you. See what I mean about the hitboxes? They're very janky in this. It's one of the only cases of that where something's hitbox is really, really, really weird. And I don't know what caused it to be that way. All I know is it's very inconvenient, and a lot of time you gotta go for the armpit. Now, the gems we're missing are over... Why is it saying over here? Didn't I already... Like, it's pointing like... Oh, it's up there. Like, I don't know why it's doing it like that. That's just weird. Didn't I go in this cave already? Oh, really? It was just the one gem. Okay. Thank you, game, for uh, making me seem like a boob. And then once we do this, we can go do the hockey mini game and done. And there we go. Well done, Spyro. You've scared the evil spirit away. Why don't you take this? I borrowed it from the temple. They don't need it. Well, obviously. Only he's the only one that uses the orbs, by the way. Like, legitimately, the only guy in the entire game that uses them, or even knows what they are. So, we'll just go over here, go do the hockey minigame, and then we'll take a dip in Idle Springs. Which is another really short level, but it's another one that we can 100% complete once we get an ability. Ah, spy. You. Alright, so we just have to use the Flame Breath to score goals, essentially. So you pick up a hockey puck, shoot it into the goal, and for this first version of the minigame, there is no competition, so you don't have to worry about it because otherwise you would have already scored and we'd be screwed. 
Um, one thing I don't like about this over the original is they really slow down Spyro's skating speed. So it makes this minigame seem longer paced than it needs to be, but if you're lucky, you can get some kind of like cheap shots like that in where, you know, you get the puck right away. But see, unlike Spyro 1, which the puck was a lot more, er, Spyro 1, the original Spyro 2, is the puck was a lot more, uh, whatchamacallit, predictable. So you could honestly kind of plan around that. In this game, it's random. Because, see, this one went at a slightly different angle than it did last time, despite going in the same general direction. And I always found that to be kind of annoying. See, because remember, the first few times he actually was able to hit the puck. These last three times, not so much. And there we go. Well done. Have this. Right on. Not right on either. Would you? And now we got to do it once more. It's only one star more difficult, which I find a little BS. I'd honestly put this one up as a up as a four star challenge because now you have to deal with this guy, and if he's close to you, he will in fact go and body check you and make you spit out the uh, see like that. He'll hit you. Oh my god. Man, now I don't get perfect, because for whatever reason, we we're able to score on ourselves. Also, can you stop that, dude, please, for the love of god? I think you can redo this, though. But see, unlike the original, he didn't actually go back and loop around like that. He would just follow you from wherever he was, which was annoying. Also, why does it say, like, there's a point on the goalie? Like, so does the goalie score the point, or does the bear dude score the point? I think they're bears, right? You're supposed to hit it towards me, you buffoon. Uh, get away from me. Man. If that scores, I'll be annoyed. Can you guys, like, stop hitting it back and forth? Like, why is his recovery time so fast? Also, why do they all keep passing it to the same guy? Pass it to me, you stupid goalie. Like, what kind of goalie do I have that's working for the enemy team? This guy is just obnoxious. Like, see what I mean about them needing to change this from, like, a, a three-star challenge to a four-star challenge? There's four and five-star challenges in this game that make this one look like this one's impossible. And I don't really get the ratings in this game because... Wait. By the way, that wouldn't have, uh... Wait, why did he angle that over there? Why are you guys... Stop angling it towards each... What? I'm so confused with why that didn't, uh... Oh my god. This is just brutal, man. I love how most of the time you're in this level too is the hockey part. Not even the actual level itself. Sadly, we're not going to get the skill point. I'll just come back and do that on my own time. It just opens up the gallery anyway, which technically I can show you on a different account. So, it doesn't matter. Well done. Have this. If you stare at it long enough, you might not see anything. Wow. That is amazing advice. You should be a philosopher. And then we'll get the 100% level complete thing like they did in Spire 1. Well, once it goes to that. And there we go. Now we can leave, which will have an outro cutscene, by the way. I think it's like, before we collect all, or, or we get our gem total. He just murdered one of their people, man. That's just dark. 
Anyways, it's one of the first levels that we can 100% complete. Now we can go get another one, which should bring us to 1,200 gems. Until we spend it on money... Well, actually, no, never mind. We have to buy the swim ability from money bags first. Well, yeah, um... I will show you if you have the, uh... Talisman. It used to show you the gems, too. I don't know if that's... Once you beat the home world or something, I don't know. Hello there, Spyro. Would you like to learn to swim underwater? I suppose I could teach you for <clears throat> a small fee. Well, technically, in real life, that's pretty normal. Great. Okay. When you jump in the water, you can use your left stick to move around the surface. Use the charge button to dive underwater. When you're underwater, use the jump button to paddle and charge button to charge. And the charge button to charge? Wow, I didn't know that was even a thing. But now we can go to Idle Springs. The next level we can 100% complete. Which honestly is one of the best levels in the game, no cap. That would be disappointing, sir. Anyways, Bob. Spyro, the idols we were carving have come to life. They've locked us out of our temples and stolen our food. And there's no reason to why they're evil. Like, this is like the one... Because the whole plot of this game, right? Is that Ripto turned the enemies against... Like, the, the civilizations against each other. And you'll really notice that in some levels where you're fighting one group of characters and helping one. And then in the next level, you're doing the complete opposite and helping the opposite group, and then defeating the, the group you were just helping. So, it really is kind of a weird thing, and some of these levels it doesn't really fit into. Like, these are the same type of dudes that were in Colossus, but they just don't do anything. Also, sometimes these vases don't break, like you could see that first one I broke, where it just kind of like, leaves the image of it behind, and then it just eventually fades away. I'll see if we can find another one. I don't know if we're going to find it in this level, because there's not actually a lot of water sections in this level. It's primarily just right here, and I find that kind of weird that you need the swim ability for next to nothing in this level. Now, there's a challenge up here that I'd normally, you know, be like, oh, let's talk to him and see what the challenge is, but I kind of know my way around this challenge, so what you want to do is you want to jump on this corner, and then jump on this corner, Jump on this corner and jump on this corner and done. Wow, Spyro, you did it! Uh, I mean, uh, I know you could do it. Now, meet me at the pond for the next challenge. So why do you sound American all of a sudden? Um, but anyways, that was it. And then the next one is over here by the idol, where we have to feed a fish other than Red. He says he's hungry and won't be satisfied until he swallowed ten fish. He's got a sensitive stomach, so watch what kind of fish you feed him. Yeah, it doesn't say which fish not to flame, but this game kind of gives it away by showing you a picture down there of blue and yellow. So don't flame the red. I don't remember if in the original it actually said, like, what fish you need to flame. I swear it used to, but in this game it just says a picture. There was actually a few times when I replayed this game where I didn't even get a single red fish to pop up, which made this challenge extremely easy. Like, like look at this. We're only one fish away, and... We had two red fish. That was it. Okay, Spyro, just one more puzzle to go. I'll meet you over by the colored stones for your final challenge. Okay, final challenge, colored stones. Got it. Let's go on. Stop hiding the gym. Also, the original used to be able to flame and charge all the NPCs. Those guys, you have to headbutt because they have a metal shield. So these weird spider bug things are kind of creepy. Hey, uh, dive bomb attack. And yeah, see, there's a river here, but you can't really go, like, dive in it, so it doesn't really provide any kind of sustenance or purpose or anything. Also, mushrooms. So I believe this Zoe's the... Metal sheet. Yeah, she pulled me in from there. She's the one that tells you about metal shields, which, once again, we already defeated two of them, so I don't know why the game has to tell you that, as if, you know, you didn't fight them yet. I don't get that. The advice. I think the thing is, is because Zoe is supposed to be a checkpoint, right? So they don't want her too early on in the stage, otherwise it would make no sense to have a checkpoint. 
But at the same time, it makes a lot of her advice kind of outdated and not very useful because you've already, you know, dealt with that. It, I don't know, it's just it's just a weird little nitpick of this game. Or with even Spyro 3. And Spyro 1, apparently. Just Spyro in general. It's like they don't expect people to go through a trial and error. You can't technically... Fl you can't charge them either. So I don't know... Oh wait, I was gonna say you can't flame or uh, charge them, so I don't know why they didn't say you can't, uh... Or you had to flame them. Aim the can't, why are you telling me that? That's something that you probably learn at the beginning of the game. Like, the camera and the camera's always been R in, like, the history of every video game ever. It's always the right analog stick. It's just because it's convenient. Because you're... You're left. If you're left-handed, then I can see you inverting the uh, analog sticks, or be, make the analog sticks do different things. But otherwise, you're most likely going to have, like, because your right hand has to move more, right? Because it's normally your predominant hand. So you're going to use it more often. Because the analog stick, you barely have to move. Because, like, the left analog stick, because it's sensitive. The right analog stick, you don't want to be as. Uh, sensitive because you're moving it as a camera, so you're going to be, you know, moving it around a lot more, and hence... Yeah, you know what I mean. Anyways, let's talk to this guy. Jump on these stones in, the in the correct order, yeah. There's there's no, like, real thing. I just know which pattern you gotta go in for whatever reason after doing it 10,000 times, and there we go. Nice job, Spyro. You're pretty smart for a dragon. Uh... All I have to give you is this shiny thing I found in our toolbox. Wait, so why were we opening up a toolbox? Because in the original, it's actually just a toolbox. But I forgot to go over. There's only two uh, orbs. Wait, Foreman Bud's puzzles. Do they actually? Gem lamp, flight outdoors, lizard hunt, hunter's challenge, evil spirit search, hockey versus goalie, hockey 101. I didn't actually know that it said which orbs they are. That's kind of cool. And now we gotta go and do some backtracking. One thing I'm not a huge fan about uh, a lot of games is backtracking. Never really cared for it. I don't care if a level's long, as long as it doesn't make you purposely go out of your way to backtrack. Unless you've missed something, then that's on you. But, uh, it's just, like, like, I love the look of this level, so it's not that much of an issue. But it really slows down the pacing of gameplay sometimes. Especially if you don't have a lot of time to play a game or something because of school or work or whatever and things like that. Anyways, let's grab the talisman while we're here from Bob, Spyro, or Max. you're pretty tough. If you ever want a permanent job, we've got a place for you here. But for the moment, I want you to have this talisman. All right. Some kind of jade idol. And now we just have to collect all the gems and get the last orb, which, by the way, is actually really easy. This level in general is actually really easy. I guess it technically is the second level, because Glimmer is the first level, so of, of course it wouldn't be very hard, but... So yeah, your next orb is down here, and they don't actually tell you what you're supposed to do, but you can kind of assume... You can kind of... Well, assume? I'm going to assume you guys can figure it out. It's not very difficult. I think he can also hurt you. I I've actually never tried touching him before, so that sounds funny. But you'd use the supercharge to break all of these little statue things that these girls are on, and boom, done. Look at that. The hula girl's ring dance blew up that idol like a Roman candle. Now I can pursue that dancing career I've dreamed of. Take this orb. It could help you go places. Thank you, Stella. And that's our final orb, just like that. Also, I love how the females literally look the exact same. Also, none of them actually have any body parts. They're kind of just weird. They're just green lizard things. See what I mean? Like, they just, they're just green lizard things. I don't even know what they are. They're essentially the same race of creature that was in Colossus. But instead of being like a goldish yellow color, they're green. So they're kind of like humans that come in multiple colors, but no idea what they are. Some enemies actually do have names that are told throughout the game via skill points or just like in-game NPCs, but them, no. 
Also, the idol you need to go to is actually this one for the skill point. I thought it was a different one at first, so that's an easy skill point, aka a free life. Weird that it kept me going. Normally if you just walk through there, you don't actually get the speed boost, it just moves you forward a little bit. But for whatever reason, it kept me charging even though I wasn't holding the charge button. Uh, so that threw me for a loop for a second. Now we gotta go this way. Yeah, a lot of this level is literally just on the treetops, I guess, or the mountaintops. I don't even know what you call this. And there's the river from the um, end of the level there. And bada bing bada boom. And these should be the last gems over here. Just right behind this idol. That's the idol I thought you were supposed to get on as a kid. But, no. It's not. Now, hopefully, we have the rest of the gems. Yeah, it should be eight, uh, at 08. So, boom. There we go. Now we can just exit level. And we should get the cutscene here. I think we get the cutscene. Huh. Oh. <laughs> 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 They look so uneasy. In the original, what they did was they actually looked happy that the guy wasn't going to kill him. But see what I mean? That just brings the brings back the question of, like, are the Tiki dudes actually evil or not? Like, I'm so confused. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And in the next episode, we will be exploring the rest of what we can in Summer Forest and taking on probably a level known as Huracos. One of my least favorite levels, even though it's actually not a bad level. See you guys next time. Join the Patreon and Discord in links below.